Porto, the Invicta, the undefeated city, as it's called, because it's never surrendered to foreign invaders. It's known to be a welcoming city and also touted as the most authentically Portuguese city in all of Portugal. We've been told many times by Portuguese and foreigners alike that we should go and visit Porto and that we might fall in love with it. Since we're still looking for a Portuguese city that fits our family the best, we decided to give Porto a shot and visited this picturesque city during the long weekend. So, is Porto really the best city in all of Portugal? Let's find out. Day one. Day one didn't get off to a good start as the weather was shit. I mean, honestly shit. It had rained the night before on our drive to Porto from Cada Serenia and the morning was completely drenched. I mean, there was a glimmer of hope as there were some sun kind of peeking through the clouds, but everything was just soaking wet. And of course, with two young kids, it wasn't ideal. And it also wasn't a very good first impression. So we're just kind of getting the vibe of the city, getting a feel for it, just to see, does its vibe match what we like? Initially, not so much. One of the things that we look for is what is the, the closest, the highest peak to give us a bird's eye view of this wonderful city. And the, the obvious choice for us when we looked at Google Maps was the Porto Cathedral and the famous Porto Bridges. And so here we actually, we were actually a bit closer to the cathedral. So we took a little, little tour to go to the cathedral to get a, a view of the surrounding area and just to kind of check it out. So here, the uh, Porto Cathedral, and there were quite a few people in the street, which, you know, kind of surprised me because it, it had just finished dumping raining that day or well, that morning. And it was good to see people out and about. And one of the interesting things is that even though everyone touts Lisbon as being, uh, I mean, Lisbon as being a very, very touristy city, there were a shit ton of tourists in Porto as well. So that was a little surprising to us. Well, at least to me that there were so many tourists. I mean, you knew there were tourists because they were dragging their suitcases. So we actually made it to the Ponte Luis the first bridge. And man, it was what well, was an amazing view, to be honest. It was a very, very nice view being right there on the river, seeing all these old, old houses that actually survived the 1755 earthquake and it was it was a sight to behold and to be honest one of the kind of sad depressing parts was that from this bridge you can see a lot of the houses were in disrepair i mean uh, prime prime real estate where you would think these things would be absolutely amazing to to have a i don't know airbnb or whatever but you would think that it would be an amazing spot to have just a renovated house a house that's up kept to keep up with the aesthetics of the city but there were a lot of houses like in this region or right along the river that were in bad shape like really bad shape and then here you can kind of see the, I guess the train kind of goes up there. I've, I've never seen a trolley go up there, but there are train tracks. So uh, it's kind of cool to see, but you know, you get to kind of see the, the surrounding areas around the river, which is really cool. It was honestly an awesome sight. And so here we actually made it across the bridge. Technically, this is not considered Porto anymore. It's actually considered Via de Gaia. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Oh, Villa Nova de Gaia. And you kind of see people just, you know, kind of crossing the bridge there. But they have this massive structure here. I don't know what this is, but 
man it was really really big and and there's a nice little park that we'll actually go check out right behind the bridge but this spot once you get over to Villa Nova de Gaia right across from the bridge you can actually take a gondola across the other side and so this park right here this park is actually called Jardim de Moro and it was a nice spot to kind of get up high because it's elevated over the surrounding areas so you can actually see uh, you know all the way down the river you can see the bridge in the backscape here you can see the city of Porto and then that massive structure there so we got back across the bridge of course we want to see more sightseeing so we went to the famous McDonald's I believe it's called the McDonald's Imperial or Imperium but we end up going into this McDonald's just to check it out to see what all the hoopla was about and for it to be a McDonald's is actually quite impressive. I mean, I did have pretty low standards of what I was expecting to see, but the the aesthetics inside the the stained glass inside the McDonald's was was quite nice. It was quite impressive. And I don't know if that's all kind of like uh, full or painted plaster or whatever, but I mean, it was it was aesthetically pleasing. After going to McDonald's, of course, we had to go check out the famous bookstore. It's the Liberia Lelo, or English, the Lelo bookstore. And it's actually said that J.K. Rowling actually took inspiration from this library and creating the School of Hogwarts and its moving stairs. Yeah, it's recommended to kind of book ahead, otherwise you could be in line for hours. I mean, we saw that you can be outside for different, like three hours but you have three different options to kind of book ahead three different types of tickets where the first one which is the the normal ticket the silver i guess you can redeem your ticket value for a book purchase which is like eight euros then you have the gold ticket which is you get a ticket voucher with a book reservation which includes a book from the exclusive collection which is called the collection by Leveria Lello, which is fifteen ninety five, and then lastly the platinum ticket, which is fifty euros, which is quite a bit, and this includes a redeemable ticket voucher value for the book purchases, access to the Gemma Room, and priority entry. I will say, being in this library, I don't know if it's true that she actually took inspiration from it, but it is absolutely gorgeous i mean absolutely gorgeous the details the wood carving the stairs the stained glass ceiling the it is just gorgeous 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 now the book selection eh shit to be honest but i mean it's not a very big place to be honest i mean it was quite crowded in there and you you kind of feel like sardines packed in there but you know, you definitely have to check it out. Uh, I, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. You definitely have to check it out. But know that you're gonna be packed in there like sardines. And lastly, what I will mention about the tickets is, even though we had a ticket, we still had to wait in line for almost an hour to get in there, which was quite annoying, especially when you have two young kids that, you know, don't like waiting for anything. And that's why we actually booked ahead. But anyway, check out this place. It is a site to check out in Porto if you're there. And then lastly, in just a, a view from the top, but you kind of see the people kind of shuffling in and out. And they actually give you a time limit to be in the store, FYI. But it is gorgeous. After we left the Liberia Lelo, you can kind of see the line here to the left. We decided just, you know, tour the city for the rest of the day. We, we had a little bit of time to spare before dinner, and we figured we'll just kind of stroll the streets and see what's popping. So this fountain here is actually the Fonte dos Leos. And the surrounding area is just a nice calming place to chill out. You see people kind of skateboarding in the area, cause it's, yeah, which is also kind of cool, but yeah. It's a, it's a chill spot where lovers kind of get together. And yeah, we found this particular street. I don't remember exactly where it was, but man, it was it was really charming. And it was abutted right next to a, a pretty big park. 
I mean, it didn't have anything for kids, but it's a nice park to kind of just hang out and chill in the benches and, well, I guess the concrete benches here, but it was really chill. You see more row houses and architecture here, which is really, really nice. And that tower in the background, you kind of see there, is the Clerigos Church. We didn't go in and check it out, but we were actually looking for some neat. But you can get another view here of the church. And this was the base that we actually went to check out. It was a it was a vibe. I'm not gonna lie, it was a vibe. People were outside just kind of hanging out in that whole grassy area, people were sitting there hanging out. But it was nice. Ultimately, we didn't eat there, but we ended up going to Puro 450, not too far from the Airbnb that we had. And the live music there was fire. Not even going to lie. The food was quite tasty, too. We had pizza, chicken. I mean, it was it was a pretty good way to kind of kind of end the night. So that was it for day one. Man, I have to say the architecture here in Porto is, is quite nice. And on the second day, we did have better weather, which was extremely good because, you know, the first day was, uh, you know, a little sour taste. But, hey, also, you know, I also did some more digging and research on Porto. And, and one of the things that keep coming up is that most people who actually visited Porto, they actually love the tradition and the contemporary landscapes including the businesses in the buildings and since most of the buildings were actually you know kept alive during the 1755 earthquake you get to see a lot of the original architecture in its original glory so it is a very picturesque very very picturesque city and yeah i actually enjoyed it from uh from a visual standpoint so here we get to the famous street that we were trying to locate it is actually rural de pasios manuel and this street actually intersects rural de santa catarina and actually harbors the coliseo where the, the events and concerts are actually held quite frequently so we end up going to honest greens as you can see here it was a really chill, really chill chill vibe place and honest greens they had some some dope vibe it was a dope vibe we actually got some really good food there and you know honest greens it's like a vegetarian restaurant they do gluten-free plant-based keto options and they do a lot of their food without processed ingredients, no additives, all that kind of stuff. And you know, our family's kind of into that, so it was kind of dope to see. Then on the way heading out, it's wonderful just to see people dancing in the street. This particular street was a vibe. You straight? Okay. And here are all the murals on the wall. It was pretty dope. Pretty cool to see and check out. So. We just made it to the main intersection where you enter the train station. And this is actually the Sao Bento railway station. So a little bit about this train station that I found was really interesting is that quote unquote, supposedly JK Rowling actually took inspiration from, from this train station when creating the train stations and Harry Potter films and books. In particular, the platform nine and three quarters. I will say that I did not see the inspiration and the connection between, between the two. However, I did see inspiration from the train itself. And I'll put a picture in it here because the old locomotives that used to run here actually look like this but aesthetically all the painted tiles the the, de the details and the ceiling it was a sight to behold it was really really cool to see 
And then I kind of walk up under, I mean, this, this is an actual functioning train station, which is really cool. But, you know, of course, it's all been modernized and everything. But, but yeah, you can kind of see it here. And it's glory. And, um, yeah, it was cool to see. But I, I was honestly disappointed. I, I tried not to do too much research, see any pictures. I just find out what are the happening spots. Let's go see them. And I try to see it and experience it without being, like, getting spoilers, without getting any spoilers. And... Yeah, it was it was a pretty train station, but as a Harry Potter fan, it's cool, but I don't see it. <laughs> and our last stop was actually to go down to the river, to the whole river walk and boardwalk and promenade. So I think I believe it's called the the Mar the Margem do Rio Douro Ribeira in Portuguese, but it was a chill spot. You had some vendors down here kind of selling the wares. You get some snacks and they had like food and stuff and to be out on the water and sell the boats. It was cool, but it was windy. It was windy. And it's just something to note, you know, luckily we had our wind jackets, but it was a cool little spot. And it was a good way to kind of end our vacation and tour a Porto. Could we consider Porto as a place to live? The short answer is no. The weather alone is a deal breaker for us. And then the cost of housing is actually quite high. 